First of all, it was a very well crowded session, so a lot of interest into this topic. And uh, there were, as you say, three to four very new topics. And uh, we started off with his bundle pacing, direct his bundle pacing, which is something that is uh, around for many, many years as a concept. But they have done very nice reg uh, registry uh, investigation where they could show that they could improve patients by direct pacing of the his bundle, improving the propagation of the activation which I think was something very interesting. And uh, there's going to be a trial that's going to investigate this uh, in a larger amount of patients to see if it's something that could be, to some extent, competitive, even to biventricular pacing, and uh, also allow for programming of much shorter AV intervals, which has been shown to be effective in those patients. So something very interesting as a new concept on a larger patient population. Um, the second presentation uh, summarized the experience with a uh, leadless pacemaker, the worldwide experience, and first of all nicely showed that this is safe and very well feasible in a large amount of patients. And um, it tried to let us have a look into the future. So currently we can only pace in the right ventricle. And there's concepts to extend uh, leadless pacing to the atria in terms of first sensing in the atria, in like a VDD pacing mode, something that uh, will be, I think, available uh, in the, not in the nearest future, but quite soon. And secondly, to look for other places to uh, place like uh, leadless pacers in the atrium and then try to find a way how they can communicate, sort of AV sequential pacing by placing two different pacemakers in the atrium and in the ventricle, or to use it just for a patient with a sinus node disease and no AV block. So something uh, extremely interesting. Also, as it could be used as a combination with the uh, leadless pacing in the right ventricle, combined with other left ventricular like ultrasound pacing modes, and uh, to use it for biventricular pacing. Um, the, the third um, very interesting paper was about the combination of subcutaneous defibrillators to prevent from sudden cardiac death uh, and to use a pacer in the right ventricle, for example, in the form of a leadless pacemaker. So you would have a leadless pacemaker in the RV and same time a subcutaneous defibrillator and they should communicate with each other to be able to do anti-tachy pacing. And um, there's been some data in uh, animals and um, also very few other experiences, very few in preliminary, to show that the, uh, there's no negative interaction between the pacing and the defibrillator. So pacing would not inhibit the defibrillator to work. And that from the uh, viewpoint of safety, it's feasible. So it's something that's in the, I think, not too far away. And uh, finally, there was a very good summary of the uh, early and the later experience with the ultrasound wireless pacing. And there has been a study in more than 20 patients now with an improved delivery device that um, showed very good long, uh, short-term results. And also that type of device could be used maybe in the future combined with other type of pacing modes or defibrillators and that was the main let's say uh, focus in terms of outlook into the future how we can kind of combine different devices have them communicate and uh, increase safety and finally the the final questions were about money how could we do that in terms of reimbursement and uh, we all agreed that if it's used on a broader scale, then it's going to be available hopefully for most of the patients. So maybe that sums up what we heard today best. Thank you.